Hello YouTube! I am Pinstar. And I'm Mystic. And today we are diving into episode two of your first game of Stellaris. You psyched? Yay! All right, I think uh, the peacocks are, uh, are he yes. who uh, created. So let us dive into our very first game and I'll show you around. Okay, I um, forget what race they were, like what their race name actually was. But... Well, we'll get a summary in just a second. Go ahead, new game. Uh, your there mouse we... is reversed. I never know which button to press. Yeah. <laughs> so there they are um, in their in all their glory here. Uh, you have a little uh, uh, reminder of, of them. Feathertopia, continental preference, uh, fanatical materialist xenophiles, mechanists, environmentalists, charismatic fleeting, rapid breeders, and decadent. The Plumegians. Plumad. Plum yeah, I don't even know how to say it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, so let's go ahead and select them. Now, this uh, this section is where you customize your game, how you determine uh, precisely how uh, how many races, how many, um, you know, what, what are the different conditions of your universe? Because the game generates a new universe every time you play in it, but there are some, uh, some, some variations to it. Okay. Now... As far as your very first game, there are, there are a number of things that you can do to sort of, um, what's the best way to put this? Uh, make things a little bit easier for yourself, or at the very least, just make things a little bit more even in terms of uh, what you're likely to encounter. Um, a lot of people um, will start out in smaller galaxies, but ultimately it's not so much the size of the galaxy as it is the density. And I've found through personal testing that a huge galaxy with 23 people might sound like a lot of a lot of AIs, but there's a lot, a lot of space for all those AIs. There's a lot of space out in space. There is a lot of space out in space. Is um, there's enough room for you to wiggle to to have some wiggle room, but not it's not so far apart that like nobody sees each other until the mid game, because okay. that, that that you know. Um, I've turned off a, uh, advanced AI starts. You'll probably want off. That's where a couple, uh, sometimes some of the AIs will randomly get to start with a few extra techs and a few extra worlds under their belt. It makes them a little bit more dangerous until you can catch up to them. Probably not recommended uh, for your first playthrough. Um, now, Fallen Empires and Marauder Empires, these are a bit different. Um, and I do actually recommend having these in your game. Fallen Empires are, are empires that start out with an insanely developed level of technology, but they're dormant. They've, oh. they've sort of fallen into disarray. Um, they will generally leave you alone as long as you leave them alone. Um, now, later in the game, something may cause them to awaken and suddenly uh, start asserting themselves. But at that point, you'll have had a chance to actually get established. So fallen doesn't mean like extinct races that have left their mark. Nope. There's uh, pl okay. plenty of those to be had. But fallen means like, you know, they, they used to be a powerhouse, but now they're just kind of, you know, inward squabbling or for some reason just not growing. They're not going to attack you or try to expand or take your stuff. It's just, you know, they're there, they're behemoths, but they're sleeping giants. Okay. Marauders are a little bit more active, but um, they're they're like the Mongols, essentially. They, they raid people. Okay. Um, and you have ways to either pay them off or defend against them by the time they come knocking. Um, tech tradition cost, habitable world chance, um, uh, keep it at one, one, you know, normal chances for those. Uh, primitive civilizations, uh, um, uh, races that have not yet reached uh, the uh, uh, FTL right. age, uh, how often they appear, uh, keep it at that. Crisis strength. At the very end of the game, there is a random crisis that will happen to the galaxy. Something that is sort of the end game boss okay. to the whole thing. And how strong is that? For a galaxy of this size, 1.5 is normal. Uh, I wouldn't worry about that for your first playthrough. You um, and then down here, mid game start, end game start. This is when events are set to trigger, and this you know these are your normal and and uh, uh, I keep it at that. Victory year is when this game determines you know who's the winner by points. Okay. Um, for your first game, difficulty definitely a, a, a factor to um, uh, to consider. With Megacorp, they uh, introduced a uh, uh, oops, not Grand Admiral. Um, 
No, they introduced a, um, a cadet level di- difficulty, which gives the player some bonuses. So that's like the easy Like Like mode. super, t- yeah, like it penalizes the AI, gives the player bonuses. So like playing on story slash casual mode on exactly. an RPG. Okay. Now me, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to show my colors here a little bit. I'm, I'm going to recommend your first game not be on cadet. Right. Um, I would actually just recommend Ensign, which is where you get no bonuses, uh, the AI gets no bonuses, everyone's on an even keel. Okay. Because um, that way you kind of, you, you learn to understand the base level of things, you know, how much, how many minerals does a mine really make you when you're not, you know, if you, if you get used to the, the newbie boosted levels of that, you know, you might develop some, you know, uh, misunderstandings of some of the mechanics. And that may, it would make it harder to grow into higher difficulties. That's just my opinion. Yeah, um, scaling I'm fine with that. scaling difficulty means nothing. Uh, that's only if you're uh, playing it higher than Ensign. Okay. Um, AI aggressiveness normal probably a good idea for your uh, um, uh, for your. Th- uh, what are the play. other options? Uh, then you got high or low. Oh, okay. Um, and you, you know a mixture is always good because you need a couple of warmongers in there to keep you on your toes, but not every single race you meet is going to be out for blood. Right. Okay. Uh, Empire placement random, probably a good idea. Usually gives you enough wiggle room to expand out uh, without being boxed in too early. Um, advanced neighbors. Yeah, no, no, we, we turned off the advanced AI before. Um, and then this just aff- affects the uh, formation of the galaxy. Hyperlanes, uh, gateways, wormhole pairs. Just keep everything at normal. Ah, this one down here they added. Uh, guaranteed habitable worlds. Two. Um, at the beginning of the game, uh, with this set to two, and this is actually how it's been for the longest time, um, your, your, your per- preferred world type is continental. You're, you're guaranteed to have at least two other continental worlds spawn near you. You still have to go out and colonize them. You don't start the game with them under your belt, but they're nearby. After that, it's all random what types of planets are available. Um, and also Iron Man, I'd say off, because sometimes if you make a big mistake, you can just reload from an earlier save. Iron Man. What is Iron Man? Iron Man prevents you from uh, loading from an earlier save. Oh, yeah, no. It only keeps one save file. And we're not, you know, it's for your first game, you're not achievement hunting. No. <laughs> so let us dive in. Okay, so let's see. Uh, Feathertopia. In the eons since the first primitive plumad... Plu- uh, why did I pick this name? <laughs> Plumagian communities took shape in the meadows and forests of Feathertopia. Our civilization has spread and prospered. Despite our rapid progression through the technological ages as a species, we were fragmented and inefficient. A new system emerged during these chaotic times that delivered us from superstitious beliefs and brought order to the society. Some resisted this change out of irrational fear, but after several pacification wars, they too became productive components of a greater whole. Now after the... I can't read. Now after the discovery of the Hyperlane Network, the finest minds of Feathertopia have finished development of the first hyperdrives. The stars themselves are finally within our grasp. Yay! Excellent. So let us begin. Thankfully the game begins uh, paused here. So this right here is uh, um, our home system, okay. um, your uh, your home star, Yal Basque. Um, and you can see down here, we have Feathertopia, mm-hmm. um, uh, your, your uh, home world itself. We also have a, a number of other little worlds, some of which have resources under them. You can see under here the okay. little uh, icons here. Yeah. I'll explain those in just a moment. Are they colonized or do we have to do that? Well, here's here's the thing. You see how, let's see uh, Col- Coltrane right here. Mm-hmm. They, see how that that, uh, that little mineral icon is yeah. green? That means the game pre, pre-started a built mining um, uh, mining rig there for oh, you okay um so that's that's ours it's giving us bonuses it's helping us out but 
Let's, uh, but notice how uh, around it here, there's a bunch of others where there aren't things. The, the numbers are white, right. like uh, uh, Yatro there. So my suggestion here is let's, let's, what we want to do is we want to start by tapping into the rest of the resources in, uh, in our territory. You know, in Mass Effect 2, when you're launching probes and, and extracting resources from planets, but yep. you're not actually like going down there and yep. building a colony. It's sort That's of like what this. this. Okay. We're, 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 we're building orbital either, um, you know, mining rigs to just, you know, remotely extract stuff or research stations to observe some interesting phenomenon. It doesn't, it doesn't take population to work these. You just build them. They cost a little energy upkeep, but otherwise they just give you a return. So no reason not to. Okay. So to build one, click on your construction ship right here. Capricious plumage. <laughs> Now, um, your construction ship is what you do to uh, both uh, build new mining rigs and also claim new systems. But we'll get into claiming systems in, um, in a little bit. Um, okay. Now, right-click the name of uh, the planet you'd like to... Uh, Wait, which one am I doing? This one? Uh, I'd say, yeah, true. I, I usually oh, recommend okay. starting with the minerals um, and then build mining station. Now, that costs 100 minerals to build. We started the game with 100 minerals. Um, so which now we have zero, but we're making 17 a month. So that'll come back fairly quickly. Okay. Um, now the, um, now as far as our other ships here, we have our science ship. Happy plumage. <laughs> Happy plumage. Yes. Now on, on board your science ship is one of your leaders, one of your, specifically your scientist, uh, Tabak. Uh, Tabak. Uh, currently level one. Um, oh, sorry. And um, actually, go ahead and mouse over their trait down below. Uh, this? Yep. Okay. So every every uh, leader starts the game with at least one trait. Um, and there is are... it one of the traits that I chose no, for the no, race? No, no. These are these oh. are these are like this is this individual's personality oh, trait. Okay. Um, or rather, field of expertise. Now this this um, this person doesn't have a field of expertise, but they are adaptable, which means they just naturally learn things faster. So while they're level one now, they get 25% uh, more experience. So they're going to level up pretty quickly. Okay. Um, now, what uh, to what end? Um, uh, what 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 uh, what we want to do here with our first science ship is we need to explore beyond our solar system. Right now, all since our race just invented hy uh, hyperdrive, we've never been outside the solar system. So oh. now it's time to venture forth. Oh, so this is going to be like the scout in exactly. civilization? Exactly. Okay. This is your scout. Okay. Um, so click this button here to go to the galaxy view. Ooh. So here we are. Oh. And if you keep zooming out, we're, oh part, we're part of a rather large Oops. galaxy. Oops, something by mistake. That's okay. Um, you could visit all of these? All of them. There are exactly 1,000 stars and lots and lots of other AI stuff. Obviously, we don't know what's out there. Right. We don't even know what's what's uh, beyond our borders here. The only thing we do know is, see these little lines here? Mm -hmm. This is known as the hyperlane network. You can't just fly wherever you so want. You can only go to the ones that we're connected to. You can to. only go between stars along the lines as shown. And you you can't build new lines. You know, you so just, it's like the Mass Effect relays. It's essentially like that. Um, well, except those, I guess, can have you go... Well, no, you have to be Actually, connected with them. There, there's a different there's a different thing you might stumble on that is more like the Mass Effect relays. This okay. is just more like you know tunnels in space that you know permit travel. Okay. Um, so what you want to do is you want to take a look around, um, uh, at least around your your sort of your neighborhood here. So go ahead and click on um, the Happy Your Science ship here, and right click one of the one of the stars nearby and say survey system. So what that's gonna do is they're gonna fly out of the solar system, head over to that system and start taking a look around. Not only are they going to tell you what's in there, what, you know, are there any habitable planets, um, you know, the nature of the, of the system, if there's anything strange there, but they will go around every single planet and moon and the sun um, and scan them. And they might find things. They might find some resources that we can tap into, or they might find what's called an anomaly. Anomalies being sort of like a sort of like a chance card. 
you know, there's something unusual here, and that can lead to a very wide variety of different things. Okay. So, um, let us, uh, now before we unpause here, let's do uh, one more little bit of housekeeping. Okay. And that is we need to tell our researchers back home what to research. And there are three different fields. Do I just click? Up here. Oh, okay. So, We've got three, uh, these are three more leaders. So we actually have four science leaders uh, that we start the game with. And again, just like um, the one in the science ship, they each have their own uh, trait here. Um, now, the um, as far as the f uh, physics research goes, every time you pick a research by default, you are, you are given three different options. Um, uh, oh, it's right there. Right there. Okay. So you can only pick one of those three. Now... The ones that you don't pick aren't are, aren't lost to you. You'll eventually get them offered again, but you're not guaranteed to be offered them again the next time. Oh, okay. So, you know, it's more of a you know it's and and they have you know sort of a natural progression. You know, you see how there's a one there you know, for quantum theory. You know, there's another you know step above that. You know, uh, that you have to research that one first for. Okay. But again. You know, where, what you can research at a moment is not always guaranteed. Um, so you want to, uh, you know, just, you know, keep your priorities in mind. Um, now, I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty detail of exactly what, re you know, text you should get first or, or whatnot. Play around with it. Uh, generally speaking, um, texts that give you more research are pretty good at the beginning because that makes more text come faster. So then I would want to go with that. Then. Yep. So go ahead and click that. Now you have to choose one for your society research. Okay. By the way, I just noticed that they have these tiny little claws. Yeah. And they're like super colorful T-Rexes in my mind. Now. <laughs> well, aren't all birds? That's true. <laughs> um, so here we've got um, we've got a few others. Um, again, you can always go with the society research, but population growth, you can boost your already boosted uh, population growth even more by another 10%. Um, um, you also get some. What life. don't I? What was my um, racial thing? Didn't want to, Didn't I have something that was going to make them breed faster? Yeah, rapid breeders. So this would uh, this actually stacks with your racial. And since they're short lived, isn't that maybe not a bad idea? Well, the short lived doesn't actually factor into your general population. Oh, what it does factor into is your leaders. So your... the leaders die quickly, but the general population will stay the same. Well, the the. Your, your general population has the same shorter lifespan, but functionally, you know, for your as far as your economics go, that doesn't have an impact. But what it does do is your leaders have a specific age. Like if we mouse over to uh, Brunke here, Brunke is 40 years old. Okay. And, and most of the species start out with, you know, your typical human lifespan. So they'll probably live to about 70 to 100-ish, give or okay. take. With your frail trait, let's move that down. So they will they could die as young as 60. Mm -hmm. And when they die, they take all their experience and their traits and all their perks with them. And you have to hire somebody new from the ground up. So this guy's a senior citizen already. Then. Essentially. Okay. Well, this gal says... Oh, well. oh yeah. Okay. Um, monthly unit. What is, what is Unity? So Unity, and I'll show you what, what Unity does when you get your first Unity perk, because you uh, it's essentially social development. Um, it's like it's like a separate technology track, but for social policies instead of like tech tech policies. So then I don't really need that right now. It's I mean I... it's useful, but it's there's all three of these are good. Like you uh, honestly, you you wouldn't go wrong with any of these three. Oh okay. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out. Unlocks additional edicts. Cost. Uh, the um, those little traits path. right there, those little icons. Uh -huh. um, and this, is, and this is unfortunately a bad example. Most researchers will have a specific field that they're good at, and if their field matches the field icon, um, then you they get a big fifteen percent speed boost when researching that tech. Unfortunately, you don't have any field specific uh, ones. You have two maniacal. Uh, researchers, which um, just give you a flat 5% uh, bonus oh. to research speed for all fields and also increase the chance of you getting a rare attack. Research speed 
Oh, I see. Okay. Um, and then this one's resilient. This oh. one has just is going to live 25 years longer than your average member. Of so your... like a normal lifespan then. Yeah, actually a bit longer than that. They could live to over their hundreds easily. Even if they're already short-lived? Yeah, well, because that counteracts that. The short-lived one's only a uh, 10 years lifespan uh, penalty. Oh, So this is I essentially gotcha. plus okay. 15 years above the norm. Okay. Um... Oh, I don't know. Let's uh, let's let's just do that one. All right, and then engineering is more about physical stuff, ships, building stuff, economy. Okay. Um, corvettes are um, are your fir your your first uh, level and, and smallest ships, so you can make them have more hull points. You can make them cheaper and faster to build, or you can boost your miners and get more minerals out of them. Hmm. Establish new standards for the modeling. So what's the... Oh, so this one makes it build faster. This one makes it stronger? Yeah, it makes them... It gives them more hit points so they can take more damage before they blow up. Yeah, let's go with that. All right. Okay. All right. So let us unpause. Um, easy uh, pause, unpause button here is the space bar. Okay. Uh, we'll keep it on normal speed for the moment uh, so we can let things slowly unfold. Uh, you can hit close galaxy map to go back here. Minor Featherface Hector Crivis is the new heir to our empire and will take the throne when the current ruler dies. Aha, so there's one more type of, uh, well, there's another type of leader um, that's not um, related to any of these scientists, and that is the ruler. If you click your uh, emblem up there in the upper left corner, that is your ruler, and down below is your heir. Okay, so Queen Featherface is dot knock curvis so your ruler has a number of very important things they have just like your others they have traits but they have two traits okay so this these traits impact your whole empire so you know this fertility preacher means that you get more food out of your farmers and of a five percent pop growth oh man people. they are growing fast then <laughs> <laughs> and then the other one the um investor gives you more trade value which i'll explain what that does so your ruler um is is helping out your whole empire and as they're they're currently only level two oops so you can see um edict duration and monthly unity is giving a bonus as they go up in experience level their their baseline impact uh and bonuses to the whole empire um uh, get stronger and stronger they also have an agenda which also just gives a third type That's of bonus so in this complete. case their their scientific leap agenda um is telling us, yeah, let's pause it for a second, that they uh, that, that, that uh, they're bonusing uh, research by another 10% above everything else. Okay. You can also see what your heir is. So your heir will take over when your ruler dies. Um, and because you're imperial, the heir is known ahead of time. Um, right. So you can see your heir's current level and then what their traits are gonna be. So you have an idea of what, so looks like they have their, their uh, mom's uh, uh, fertility preacher, but they're going to be more about uh, upgrading your star bases when they take power. Okay. Do we even have star bases right we now? We have one star base. Uh, we start the game with oh, one star okay. base. Your star base, and I'm glad you asked about that. Nice transition here. Your star base is where, well, they they suit a number of different roles, depending on what you build them in. Now, at the start of the game, your star bases can only hold two modules and one building. Uh, essentially, just what what you fill them with, um, and your your starter star base always starts out with a shipyard. Your shipyard is needed to construct new spaceships of any type, military, civilian. Any time you need to build new ships, it needs to be at a star base with a shipyard. Um, now, trade hub is um, essentially there. Different planets and different systems will generate trade resources, and we'll see if that if we we'll probably stumble upon some of that later. I'll get into trade later, but that's important. Okay. Uh, and then the building here it cuts down on the maintenance of your uh, ships if they're docked there. Your your three ships, by the way, these are your you, this is your military right now. Uh, oh, okay. Three corvettes, uh, not terribly powerful, but they that's what you start out with. They're currently uh, parked uh, parked in orbit here, ready ready to do your bidding. Um, so your our construction ship just finished const, uh, construction here um, at Yatro. So now we're getting all the uh, uh, minerals here from Yatro. So now we can go and tell it to build something else. Okay. 
Uh, so go ahead and... Um, it's already... Oh, it's yep, already selected. Clicked. So, okay. Yeah, just right click and... Uh, Oh, wait. you you gotta right click uh, you you. Uh... Oh darn! Yeah, sorry. So, just as a reference, Pinstar is left-handed and has a left-handed mouse, and I am right-handed and I'm not used to it, so <laughs> I am constantly going to hit the wrong buttons. Just FYI. Yep. You gotta reselect your ship there. Oh. Wait. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. You don't quite have the minerals to build the next mining station. So you can oh. just tell it to enter orbit or, or hang out there. Um, okay. And then once we once we advance time enough, um, we can uh, we can do that. And then the other ship is still in the process of uh, uh, doing, doing whatever its thing. it is yeah, it's you doing. Can, you can go back to the uh, galaxy view here. And we can see, all right, so they've they've arrived in the system, and we can see by that little icon there that there is a potentially habitable world there. Ooh, Mas that star is really pretty. Oh, there's tons of different stars uh, out there, and also uh, binary and trinary systems. If you mouse over the little icon up here, you can see it is an ocean world. So not uh, not our, our sweet spot continental, but within that, that band we were talking about, so you could potentially uh, colonize that. Um, um, so team. what do I do? I click this. Oh, wait, oh well, is yeah, it still yeah. doing something? It's, it's scanning all the world. See how the, the names are sort of grayed out here? Yeah. And see how that name is kind of uh, more more white? Uh -huh. It's been scanned. Oh. So it's your ship is just bouncing around scanning everything. Oh, yeah, now everything. this one has... Oh, no, wait, no, it's... Oh, okay. Okay. And you can see the, the scan progress here. So it just scanned the star, and now there's some, some resources here in the star. Oh, and I see it's what it's there. doing now. And okay. It's, yeah, just checking out the worlds, you know, seeing, seeing what resources there are. There's some trade uh, value down there in that asteroid. But we, we can't do, tap into anything until we claim the system, and we can't claim the system until we've scanned everything here. Okay, so basically, we're just gotta, we just have to let the science ship do its science ship things. So. Yep. Okay. All right. So um, now the last thing. Um, oh, here we go. Uh, we've recovered artifacts from an ancient alien civilization on Rangshin 1. If what we have learned from these artifacts is correct, this civilization was some sort of confederation that consisted of many different alien races. They called themselves the First League and appear to have coexisted in relative peace some two million years ago. Though the Rangshin system lies in the region of space that seems to have made up the core of their territory, a partial map found among the artifacts indicate that this first league may have covered a significant portion of our galaxy before its eventual collapse. I see. So it's yeah, the, um, you, to, to your question before, there are definitely precursors that have been long extinct um, you know, that you will eventually bump into through, through these different anomalies uh, and, and other events that you'll... Uh, uncover here. Okay. I discovered my first Protheans. Yay. <laughs> I'm going to make a lot of Mass Effect references because that I love that game. Mm -hmm. And now you occasionally get little pop-ups saying how your people react to it. And this is kind of where your ethics come into play. You know, your, your, your people being xenophiles are going to be excited about finding, you know, the potential for intelligent life out there. Because again, mm -hmm. previously you've been confined to your solar system. You don't know if there's anyone else out there. Um, whereas a more xenophobic would be, oh crap, you know, what's out there? What yeah. lurks in the unknown? Um, now, the last thing before, last thing we want to check out, check out in this video, you can go ahead and um, set up, set your uh, construction ship to do a, another, uh, another item oh. here. Oh, right click. Yep. Darn it. Okay. Build my station. There you go. And actually, let me show you another little trick. So it's it's going to build that one, but we also have another hundred minerals uh, mm. available. Rather than wait for it and have to remember for it, we hold down Shift okay. and right click uh, another world. We queue oh, up the okay. next one, so it'll build this one. Aha! Our first anomaly. So anomalies are going to be things that you'll occasionally uh, trip over here. Um, and there are different, there are varying difficulties for anomalies um, and how long it takes to you to research them 
um, uh, is dependent on the anomaly difficulty versus the skill of your thing. Now this is just a, a simple level one anomaly and we have a simple level one person. So it's a routine difficulty and takes 120 days to research, which is actually pretty normal for, for this. So now if you bump into an anomaly that's way out of your league, you can just say leave it for now and mm -hmm. then come back to it later. Oh. Um, but for now, I would just say let's research okay. this. So they're going to just take a little extra they're time. They're going to take some something. extra time. 100, right. 120 days, which, you know, it takes, you can see up there, you know, one day, one day. Yeah, days one are day. fast. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you can see the progress down here. It'll, it'll right. the, the thing will fill up as they uh, research that. So last thing we want to take a look at here before we uh, end this particular episode is your actual homeworld, because that is probably the biggest uh, plethora of info itself Whoa. here. Yeah, okay. lots going on here. So let me, uh, I'm going to take control of the mouse yep, here and fine. just explain to you what, what all is going on here. So every single world is, um, is, made, up of, uh, is made up of a number of, of districts, essentially. The size of the planet will determine the total number of districts. This is a size 16 planet, so overall there are 16 districts uh, that could potentially be built. Now, being that this is our home world, the game has uh, started us off with a bunch of districts for free. Um, now, if you think of the planet as just like, you know, a, a, just a spherical surface, there are only four things that you need to worry about when it comes to building uh, on that planet. You've got your, you've got city districts, which are just, you know, cities. Um, you've got generator districts, which are, you know, think of them as like big sprawling, you know, like solar farms. You know, mm -hmm. they're very low density, but they're, they're there specifically to generate energy. Uh, you got mines, again, big sprawling mining operations, very low density, but produces minerals. And then you've got your farms, again, big sprawling, um, low density, but gives you food. Okay. So whenever you build new, uh, oh, actually it looks like our, uh, our, uh, our anomaly research concluded here. Okay. So anomalies are almost always give you good things. Mm -hmm. um, so it looks like they found a transmitter um, uh, for an ancient survey marker. Um, and so now we can, it tells us in the tooltip exactly what does researching that do. So the fact that we analyzed that anomaly means it added a four mineral deposit to one of the to planet, that planet oh, yeah, okay. that we can now eventually tap into. So there you go. And now they'll go back to just scanning the rest of their stuff. So basically, when you build new stuff, um, you, you basically choose how to use the land on your planet. Now down here, this will tell you exactly what, um, you know, how many districts you have and how many are remaining. Now, there are, there's another concept known as tile blockers. These are um, unfavorable uh, features of the planet that can eventually, uh, with enough money and enough technology, uh, be cleared away. So the... Uh, um, in, our, in the case of our thing, we've, we've pretty much, you know, gotten the planet the way we like it. The, there's just some, some leftovers from some of the earlier ages of our thing. Some slums Ew. and industrial wastelands. What have we done to our planet? <laughs> uh, but with enough money, we can clear those away. It costs us 300 energy credits, though. Okay. Uh, but clearing these out will free up a district, which we could then build something proper on. Okay. Now, oh, okay, so... Farmland. Where's the residential districts, though? The the city districts provide. Um, both. Oh, so this one on the left here is the city is the where is people the city. live. Yeah. Okay. So we've got three city districts. Um, you can see. Oh, I get it now. now okay. The, now these blocks down here represent the natural um, uh, potential for the planet. So you know your home planet is you know has enough has you know a decently high potential for energy um, districts leader gained a level here yeah um has a has a de you know pretty decent you know usually get a pretty decently balanced thing but you might bump into a planet that is relatively barren and has no available farming districts so you couldn't grow food on that planet if you wanted to but might have like a ton of mining districts if it's just very mineral rich so that allows you to sort of make more specialized planets um, as you discover them um, 
Now, as far as uh, as far as uh, your population goes, you can see our our current population down here and the number of jobs they have. Um, essentially, as you know, your population only only uh, gives you something gives you a benefit if they're working in a job, and what benefit they give you depends on what job you you uh, provide for them. Um, so at its base level, see these generator districts, for example, create plus two uh, technician jobs. The mm -hmm. technicians create energy for you. So more generator districts allow you to employ more technicians, which allow you to generate more energy, which right. is found up here. Uh, mining for minerals, farming for food. Then you get into the more advanced materials. Uh, and that's where some of these buildings come into play. Every five people on your planet will allow you to build a special infrastructure building. Um, now, these buildings don't take up district space the way that your, uh, um, you know, these four tiles do. But all four of these tiles provide some form of housing. So once your population gets high enough, you can start building more of these. Oh, okay. Um, so research labs turn um, your consumer goods this this stuff up here into research essentially they just use up um, you know right, civilian level materials and conduct experiments and they generate science for you and that and those science points are what give you points towards your tax to mm -hmm. eventually research things um, alloys um, your uh, turn raw minerals into alloys alloys are used for pretty much anything in space besides the um, the space stations here, uh, building new ships, uh, military and civilian, building new star bases, upgrading things, all take alloys. So essentially they are uh, what you need to expand your empire, either peacefully or uh, militarily or both. Um, you know, they, it's basically stuff, building stuff in space. Um, and then here we've got your civilian industries, which turn uh, uh, raw minerals into consumer goods, just stuff that people need. Now, consumer goods are used uh, not only by our scientists, but also your general population need them uh, to thrive and survive um, and be happy. Uh, so here on the population tab, we can see your, your uh, people are split up here into three different economic strata here. Got your rulers. Uh, who work in your planetary capital, mm -hmm. uh, which provides the, uh, the the two administrator jobs. Um, so obviously they're they're at the highest things. They also have the highest upkeep. Uh, see their upkeep: one food and 0.9 uh, consumer goods. Mm -hmm. They they use all. They would normally use up a whole consumer good, but because you're environmentalists, you get that. 10%. And they use a little less. They okay. use a little bit less. Specialists are sort of your middle class. You know your educated workers. Uh, that are you know doing their doing their things. Artisans um, uh, do the uh, pr you know produce the um, consumer goods. Enforcers are your policemen. Uh, metallurgists you know they, those these people work in your um, your specialized body, uh, buildings. They these um, uh, let me yeah these you can see they oh they yeah they use a, a lot less yeah okay point four. And then you got your workers your 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 grunt level stuff. What your, are these other Creature looking. These things. are your robots. Oh, robots. You remember okay. you started yes, as a mechanist. That's right. I remember now. Okay. So we started out with eight uh, eight robots who are uh, now robots. Your 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 uh, lowest level robot is only capable of farming or mining. Um, they're not quite smart enough to be a clerk or a technician. Um, so your your people are still serving in that regard. But the robots can, um, you know, they take a lot less housing. Um, and they need a lot less amenities. Amen right. You know. I assume they don't go through any consumer goods, right? Uh, it said, yeah, essentially they, they don't have, um, um, let me see. yeah, they don't have, they don't use consumer goods. Um, they just need the, uh, they just need housing, you know, somewhere to, to, yeah. to space, but a lot less. And then amenities, um, amenities are sort of like the, the services available on yours. And if I remember correctly, your, um, your, your race is charismatic, so you get a bonus when producing amenities. Mm -hmm. um, so to um, civilians, they're like, you know, good, you know, services, you know, that sort of thing. For robots, amenities are like uh, maintenance capabilities. How, how available is it to have a repair technician fix them when they need maintenance, that sort of thing. So that's why they need maintenance. They also, unlike uh, your biological pops uh, that require food, they eat, essentially, 
uh, electricity. Oh, so they're going to use more energy then. Exactly. Okay. Which is why your energy is a little bit lower than your average is because you got all these, you're powering on all these robots. Gotcha. But because your uh, ethics, you're, you actually, normally it's a whole one, but you're, you're, because of all your different bonuses, you pay a lot less for it. Um, so, you know, as, as your planet grows, you're going to want to continue expanding and building new districts and also new buildings. Now, because we crossed over a threshold here, we can build a new specialized building here. Okay. So go ahead and, and mouse through them. You can sort of see which ones are available. Uh, am I looking at ones that are grayed out? or? Well, those those you, you can't yet afford oh, with the minerals, I see. but those you, okay. you, you just wait a little while uh, for them um, to build them. So you can see what types of workers they 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 employ and what those workers would uh, produce. Okay, hollow theaters, luxury residence, precinct houses. Oh, for enforcers. Mm -hmm. Okay, resource silos. What would you recommend for? Our I would early... actually recommend for the first for your first one the uh, the monument up there. This um, one. Yep. Those culture workers will give you extra unity and society research. Is um, it is it like it, did I do yep, it right? Yep. Okay. And now it, it takes two hundred and forty days to build it. Uh, oh, okay. It, you, you paid your um, your minerals uh, cost, and uh, it's off to the races here. Um, so, in order to keep your population happy and stable, you need to provide food, the consumer goods for them, which are I mean, they're those are paid for automatically. You need to have enough housing for them, which you can see down here. Um, and you need to have enough amenities, and we've got more than enough uh, amenities here and System whatnot. System survey complete. Um, all right, and the the final thing to pay attention here is the planet's stability. Basically, if you do a good job at providing everything, this will be a, this will be an, uh, above fifty percent, and you get little bonuses the higher it is. Okay. If you start failing to provide something, either enough food or enough houses or enough amenities, people start getting upset. Um, you can also start getting crime on yours if you don't. Oh, uh, I was wondering what that other icon yeah. was. Okay. The happier your people, the less crime they generate. Mm -hmm. And also your cr crime is suppressed by enforcers. Now we have one enforcer uh, working for us here. Um, so they're, um, they're dropping crime by 25. So there would have been crime on here if we had no police uh, officers, but they're suppressing it. So essentially the planet's crime free for the moment might not always be uh, true as it grows bigger and bigger. Okay. Um, so we can uh, now take a look uh, at our uh, at our system here. We've got our uh, planet uh, scanned here. See how it's only 60% habitable for us. Um, uh, but we have a bunch of other resources here. Mm -hmm. So let's claim this place, shall we? Okay. So to claim a new world, we can usually best done from the uh, galaxy view. We click on our uh, construction ship here, and just like you're building a new um, um, a new mining station, you instead just build click right click on the star itself and say build starbase. Okay. Now this costs us uh, 75 influence and 100 alloys, which we both have. Now influence um, is is um, it's something that's that's you don't produce it from a building the way like a normal resource norm is. It's something you start the game out with a production of three of it. A little bit later, um, and in, probably in our next episode, once time has advanced a little bit, we will get into factions. And keeping them happy is what allows you to uh, uh, get more influence and then do, do more things with it. But we'll cover that in our next episode. Okay. Um, so I think, oh yeah, uh, let's also not forget to um, send our scientists away. Now that just like when you were queuing up the, uh, the mining stations, you can right, uh, shift right click and queue up a bunch of systems to be surveyed. So they'll bounce around each of oh, the okay. systems and check them out. All right. So I think Feathertopia is off to a good start, especially with Yay. that system over there. Plenty of goodies to be had. Nice. All right, folks. Oh, and we had our first. Uh, we have our first uh, tradition. We'll get. Uh, we'll get more into that in the next episode. Sounds good. All right. So if you guys like this episode and you want to see more like it, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and leave me a comment. Good, better, and different. Your feedback's always welcome. 
So until next time, this has been Pimstar. And Mystic. Um, and we're signing out. See ya! Bye.